I'm Fiona Caldicott and I'm currently Chairman of the National Information Governance Board, which is why I'm talking to you today about the importance of information governance. I chair the Oxford Radcliffe Hospitals NHS Trust, on which I've been a non-executive director for about eight years, and I also was a practicing psychiatrist in the NHS for some 28 to 30 years before I went to a post in the University of Oxford. The reason I'd like to suggest to you that it's important that you know about information governance is that it's crucial to our care of our patients. And you will all know, if you've been patients yourself, or if a relative has needed treatment, how we trust those we see clinically with information about ourselves, some of which is quite sensitive. And it's clear that uh, we should have rules, if you like, about how confidential data about patients should be looked after within the service. And that's why the NHS in recent years has suggested that everybody that works in it should have some training from those who perhaps guide patients to outpatients through to the most senior consultants and senior nurses in a, in a trust. Um, there's been less activity in general practice in relation to governance of information but I think with the new clinical commissioning groups, that's an issue which patients in particular are going to be very interested in because they may have registered with a particular practice um, rather than another one because they want to be sure that their information, their clinical information is kept confidentially. So I would like to suggest to you that you should have um, some experience of thinking about information governance, what the rules are, what the Data Protection Act says about the subject's um, rights in terms of the safety of their information, but also how we might um, be sure that when information has to be exchanged, uh, let's say between a trust and a general practice or between one trust and another, in the interests of patients' care, that it can be done in such a way that there are not breaches of confidentiality and the information gets into the hands of those who don't have any um, clinical right to, to have access to it. It's quite a complicated area, but what I would suggest to you is that there's a lot of guidance that's been published, not least by the National Information Governance Board, which helps clinicians and managers to see how information should be looked after and what the rules are for it being exchanged between one part of the service and another. So there's plenty of material to help, but also I think my s important message today is that it's, it's really key to the good care of patients, A, that they feel confident enough in us to be open and honest about what has been the problem, the symptoms, the details of that, because otherwise we won't be in a good position to give them the most appropriate care, but also so that they're confident that if their information does have to be exchanged with other clinicians or other parts of the service, that this is done in such a way that there's no risk to it getting into the wrong hands. So saying a little more about why information makes such a difference to the care that we give to our patients. You will all know from your nursing experience that when we have patients in our care, firstly we need to know as much as possible about what has brought them to see us, but also then that we're able day by day to collect the information, uh, details about their clinical status, the sorts of things that would alert you to um, thinking that they need perhaps a different approach, the various aspects of clinical material that you're familiar with in your work every day and what should then be done in terms of recording that information, making sure that it's accurately recorded so that anyone else coming to look after the patient can see what was happening to them um, previously and you can build up a set of information about that patient's care, about the incident that's brought them into it at the moment. Um, and how that can be then used in determining appropriate treatment, um, whether there's a need for a different sort of clinician to assess them, what you would want to convey to your nursing colleagues when you go off duty. There's a whole series of reasons why it's important that the, the details of their care is kept up to date and documented. 
and you will know that the Care Quality Commission does take an interest in the accuracy of patient records, whether there's a care plan there which is being adhered to. The families will want to know about that as well. And the patients themselves will be asking questions about uh, why certain things are being documented and what difference it makes to, to the care that they're getting. So I think there are a lot of reasons for information improving the care that we give to our patients and the uh, security of it being key to um, the way in which that care can be improved as we go through the treatment episode day by day. Things I'm sure you think about every day when you're doing your nursing is the safety of the patient in your care and how you make sure that that is as good as possible at all times. So I think again this is one of the reasons for documenting carefully any events that occur while you're on duty so that anyone succeeding you can see if for instance the patient has shown a tendency to fall or you're worried about the state of their skin if they might be developing bed sores and the sort of treatment that has been given um, to try and ameliorate those um, incidents. So one of the problems that's arisen, as you will know, in NHS organisations where standards have fallen is that there has not been good documentation of events during the patient's care in hospital, for instance. So it's partly the documentation of the information, but it's also then being quite sure that that is passed on to those who come on, to du on duty after you um, and setting a really good standard for patient safety in everything that we do in the NHS. I think that's part of the reason that information governance is so important and I would just say to you that while it sounds like a rather daunting prospect to understand it and to have training in it, because of its importance I would commend it to anyone who has a leadership role in the NHS. And actually when you begin to look at the rules that support the safekeeping and exchange of information, it does help you to understand why it can make a difference, not just to the patient's experience in our care, but also why we can, how we can make it much safer.